Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're going to talk all about how to be a better residential window cleaner. Uh, So if you do houses, which most of us do, then make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is going on? I just wanted to, if you're on YouTube looking at the uh, the backdrop here, my head isn't like where it normally is. I just want to see all the stickers. I was just admiring my sticker wall. But either way, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you dig it. We have well over 200 episodes. Uh, comes out every single week and uh, has been going on forever, it feels. Years of content. So go back and watch. Listen. Uh, it's anywhere podcasts are found and, of course, on YouTube. If you are one of the cool kids, you've earned your cool kids sticker. Cool kids sticker number one, cool kids sticker number two. If you've earned it, that means you watch every episode. You've given the thumbs up on the videos on YouTube. You've left comments saying how great or even mediocre that the show is. And more importantly, you have bought your supplies through me, shameless plug time. Then thank you. Like I said, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com, the world's largest window cleaning supply company. I'm pretty sure that's a fact. I don't know how we'd even check that. So that asterisk may not be a fact. But either way, uh, I want to be your supplier. I want to be your guy. It doesn't cost you any extra to go through me, but that's how I make my cheddar. That's how I can afford all these free stickers you see behind me. So if you want me to be your rep, which I hope you do, my number is 862-312-2026. It's a cell phone. Shoot me a text. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. Tell me anything that you want, because that's awesome. I want to be your guy, so please do let me do uh, put in your orders. I've seen a few people that are putting in orders on them, themselves, too. Um, I always want to put in orders, big or small, so don't think you're annoying me by letting me put orders in. That is literally my job and what I love to do. It's how I make my money, so let me put everything in. Yeah, shameless plug. But I have another thing. Speaking of sticker wall, I have so many stickers If you haven't subscribed to American Window Cleaner Magazine, please do that. This is next month's sticker if you want to see it. By the way, I don't know. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. Did a a, a Street Busters uh, thing in a water fed pole. There we go. Anyway, these are just some of the stickers. We get like a thousand sticker sheets. Thousands of sticker sheets every single month. And uh, we always get extra. So if you want to buy any sticker sheets and have awesome stickers, go to awcmag.com, get them, and uh, a sticker sheet, a new sticker sheet comes in every single episode or issue of the magazine. So subscribe to that too, and be awesome. Be a an ultra cool kid. Anyway, go check that out. Thanks, guys. By the way, you guys are, are, are subscribing all the time, which personally uh, really, really means a lot. So thank you. Thank you very much. American Window Cleaner Magazine. Again, check it out. But... Whew. Today, <laughs> these intros, man, I, I try to not go long. I'm just babbling, I swear, but sometimes I do, and I apologize. But today, we're talking about how to be a better residential window cleaner. Now, this stuff does kind of translate to commercial, uh, but remember, route is its own thing. And if you're a route window cleaner, there's a few things you can do to actually be a better window cleaner for residential, a resi window cleaner. <clears throat> There's a few things. And I just want to say that if you ever take residential, route, and commercial, the three types of window cleaning that we do, and you try to do the same things for all of them, you're going to fail because they are so absolutely different. You cannot do EDDM to route. <coughs> you just can't. Sorry, I'm just coughing for some reason. But what you can do is EDDM to houses, right? Uh, You can't really door knock residential, right? You can, but uh, I'm not a fan. But route, you have to. Commercial, you can't door knock. You can't even really send EDDM to commercial, but you do send unsolicited bids. You wouldn't put a bid packet together for... You see what I'm saying? There's lots of things that each of them have that work, And a lot of things that the other ones have that won't work on the others. And that's exactly kind of what we're talking about. I'm going to tell you a few tips and tricks to be better. I know you guys are awesome. And remember, no matter what the heck I say, I'm just some dummy with a microphone 
who sells window cleaning supplies and sits in front of a board. It's just paneling. That's how fancy I am. Anyway, uh, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, I just said it there. But the eyes you see, that's actually the uh, Unger um, Transformer box, by the way. If you haven't gotten your hands on it, it's pretty cool stuff. Limited edition. Unger always comes out with some limited stuff, which is pretty awesome. <clears throat> but I digress. I want to start off with the first one is actually a tip on how to clean the windows. And uh, I normally don't ever talk about that. <clears throat> but I know some people were asking, and I really want to bring it up. If you haven't used this, you have to use it. Now, if somebody smokes, or they cook a lot, or uh, the grill is in front of the windows, or uh, it works really well in restaurants also, <clears throat> but it is TSP. TSP is trisodium phosphate technically, but now they can't make it the same way, so it's technically a variation of that. But it's found in the paint department of any big name store. Actually, I don't even think we sell it anymore, but I mean, you can find it at Lowe's and Home Depot and Ace, wherever you shop in the paint section. And TSP is a film remover. Now, not like a film, like a, a tint, right? Uh, it might work on that. I don't know. Uh, but what it is, is it is for smoke, fingerprints, grease, all that type of stuff. You put it in your water, it smells like fish, but it works absolutely amazing. The big one is when you're doing houses, and this is not as common as, as it was when I started, but it's people who smoke. I have a couple people who have like a cigar wine room that has some nicotine, but nicotine is a little bit tricky. Just like any film, people who cook a lot, greasy places, that type of thing. TSP works absolutely amazing. So I'm not going to go into a bunch of things of how to, what to use to be a better window cleaner, but if you haven't tried, try sodium phosphate, TSP. Go and find it. It's like super cheap and sprinkle some in the water. Uh, you don't even have to do it on every job, but it's pretty stinking awesome. I'm just going to keep, I'm going to keep coughing on camera and trying to mute it. So uh, anyway, that's where that pause was. Sorry that I coughed in your ear if you're watching on uh, YouTube, but that's it for the uh, how to. I just wanted to throw that one in there because again, some people don't know about it and it's absolutely a game changer, bro. Uh, check out TSP. But another one, and this is probably one of the biggest kind of turnarounds in my company in residential, was collecting a check at every house. Now, this is number two in my like worldwide game changers for my company. I'll tell you what number one is later. But this is huge. Now, I know that not all of us get stiffed, and I've only probably lost... Uh, not counting route work, just houses, probably maybe $2,500 worth of, of windows is all I've ever lost in all my years. That's not bad. And if you think of how many crews we were running and, and, and how long we did it, right? So it's not as much for that. But what it is, is that if I go to a job, right? I do my bids over the phone, so it's fast. I book a job right away. I go and send the crews there. They take care of the work and leave, right? All of the work that I uh, had allocated has been completed. If you don't have the check, right? If you don't have the payment for what you did, the problem is, is that you're going to lose more money. So if I don't have the check at the time that we're done, now I have to pay someone to call up our office manager, or whatever. Say, hey, I just want to let you know, you know, uh, you haven't paid your bill yet. I have to send somebody an email. I have to send them a second email. I have to then send them a third email and call them and do all of that extra work to try to collect from people. And on top of that, this is a minuscule, but I'm losing out on that money that would have accrued interest. Now, say you're only talking a couple pennies, I'm still losing money. If you lose three cents, you lose three cents. Now multiply that times all the years and all the jobs you've ever done, right? What I do when I get to a job is our operations officer, uh, if he's on the field, or our crew chief, the person who is the main person in the crew, they're going to go to the door and they're going to give them the whole packet. We've talked about that a hundred times, what's in the packet, all that good stuff. Go back, listen, check it out. But one of the things they say is, okay, when we're done, uh, you can put all that back in, including the check, into the envelope. You can seal that up so I don't read it and we'll go right to the office. I always will tell them that right away so that they know. 
if I say that and I make it loud and they go, oh man, I, I got to actually run. Okay, great. Just make sure you write that check out beforehand. Remember, there's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if anything is not to your satisfaction when you get back, just let us know. We'll absolutely make it perfect. If they go, oh, I don't have a check. Okay, not a problem. Let me go ahead and get that card from you now and uh, I'll have the office run it. Right? If you are running Stripe or QuickBooks or any of that stuff and your operations officer or crew chief has that on their phone, let them run it right away. Right? Let them run it. Let them get that all done. Because here's the thing. You do not need to collect after the fact. When the work is done, the work is done. I've had maybe two people in all the time say... Um, Oh, I'm not going to pay you uh, right away. I I'm just going to send it in the mail. Say, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, unfortunately, we don't do that. Uh, we would need that uh, once service is completed, we'll need the check. Uh, every time I've ever talked to somebody, they're like, oh, okay, no, not a problem. I'll just write it out now. But if somebody was like, oh, man, no, I, I for some weird reason, need to mail it. Or how do I know that the, the I'm going to be satisfied or something? I always let them know that we have everything covered for that side. This is what we do. We are experienced, or I should say, we are uh, focused on the experience, right? And with that, it really gets people to pay. Paying before everything's done, now I don't have to collect. And that every day if I do, you know, a crew does $1,000 in work, they will bring back $1,000, which is how the business runs. I can't have them go out there and do $1,000 worth of work and then have it take 30, 60 days to get that $1,000, because I've already paid them for that. I'm not going to be the one sitting out. I'm not a bank. I want my money now. I want the job closed. And I want to move on to the next thing. That's called efficiency. Run your job and company as efficient as possible. Remember what we said last week. Efficiency equals money. Time equals money. Right? So that's a big one. If somebody's not home, which we do a lot of work for people who are not home. They just leave a key or they have oh, a garage code or whatever. Great. Well, I do need the card uh, to collect the card right now. Uh, after everything is done, we're going to charge that. But I do need that card uh, before we can go to that job. Oh, not a problem. And I'll save that card so that if they're not home, I can charge it. Because I'm going to get my money. I'm going to get the money right away. I know a lot of you are like, oh, this guy, money hungry. Guy. No, 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 no. Efficiency in business is just that. I don't need to pay somebody or lose money to get any more money. I don't have to collect the money I've already earned. I don't have to pay somebody to collect the money I've already earned. Collect that money, I'm telling you. It's going to be a game changer without using that stupid cliche. Another one that uh, people go, wow, this guy. But it's upsell every job. Now, I don't mean pushy. If any of you, and I've, I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients of you guys, of you guys listening right now that buy from me, which by the way, thank you so flipping much for being amazing. Really, I, I don't get to say it and I, I try to say it a lot. And uh, you guys, sometimes it just, uh, it sounds like it is uh, automated, but I really appreciate everything you guys do for me and uh, let me put orders in. With that being said, I am not pushy. Not at all. That is not how sales is done. That's not how I want to be sold to. It's just not good practice. Being pushy sucks. It's a bad experience and the experience is what matters, right? But now upselling means I'm going to tell you other things that we do. I'm going to give you prices and say we can add this on and I can get it. Here's the thing. McDonald's decided to go and say the one line that they are known famously for all that now probably, gosh, 75 years ago. No. Yeah, what year is it? Yeah, 70 years. Sure. We'll say 75 years. I don't know. Fact check me. Uh, but they made one line, and it's called, Would you like fries with that? Now, not only was it a little bit new in the beginning, but a lot of people didn't quite know about the fries, and they wanted to get a burger. Just get a burger, because people didn't eat as much as they do now. People are pigs now. They weren't back then, right? Get a burger. They'd eat that burger, just a little, little something, you know? It was a 50-cent cheeseburger, and they were good. The big thing was, is that people would not take the initiative to go and buy the fries on their own. A lot of them did, of course, but some people would still just order uh, maybe a shake uh, or a malt and a uh, cheeseburger. That's all they get. When McDonald's came out and started saying, would you like fries with that? That is an upsell. Just by saying, would you like fries with that? They increased their sales amazingly they increased sales 
amazingly. They raised their average ticket price. They raised, raised their yearly income. And more people found out that they like the fries, and now next time they're going to buy the fries. Now, the big thing is an upsell is not being pushy. When I go to a customer's house, right, I'm going to say, um, okay, so we're here to do the inside and outside of the windows. Now, did you think about getting your screens cleaned? Did uh, you need any of those cleaned? I didn't have you down for any. Just saying that. They could always go, no, 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 uh, no screens cleaned. I don't really need that. We're an air conditioning house. Oh, cool. Perfect. And all of those screens are in, in good order. You don't need any replaced either. Nope. Okay, awesome. So while we're here, we're going to be up on ladders, if that's the case. Or we have ladders on the truck. Uh, anything needed in the gutter cleaning area? Nope. We're good there, too. Just the uh, windows. Okay, perfect. But a lot of times as you're doing that, I always will preface it to and say, uh, here's my spiel where I'll talk to you a little bit about the other services we do, just so you know uh, what we do. And that's how I enter that. And then I'll say the gutter cleaning and roof cleaning. And just so you know, too, we do roof cleaning. It's another crew, but that gets all the streaks off your roof. If you do house washing, you notice any green, we do that also. And snow, whatever. I'll let them know all that stuff, but I'll always say, oh, and just so you know, there's a few services here in the envelope. Take a look at them. Let me know what you think. We can always give you estimates right here on the site. Upselling allows them to know what you do. Now, I've said this a bunch of times, and I thought it was one of the most interesting statistics I've ever done in my business. And I sent a thing, and I, I think I put like 10 total services that we offered. And I broke it down to like outside window cleaning, inside window cleaning, you know, inside and outside window cleaning. And then I did roof cleaning, house washing, uh, uh, retaining wall washing, driveway washing, garage floor washing. Like I broke up all these services. It could have been just like four ones, but I really wanted to see. And out of those 10, and by the way, I really did up until this point think, man, I'm doing a crack up job. I am letting them know. They, I just am such a, I got this survey back. How many of our services do you know? Check all the services you knew we did. The average was three out of 10, three. Now these are the same people that every single time I hand them a packet that has the stuff in it, pictures, images, the emails I send, the postcards I send, they've gotten our flyer. They've gotten our trifold. They've had us do it for so long. Our guys have quoted, but they forget what you do. You have to always be reminding them. Every single person in the world knows, we'll say not even the world, which is probably true. Everybody in the United States, if they're two years and older, know what a McDonald's is. If you eat there or not, you know what it is. I have not eaten at a McDonald's in years, years, but I know what a McDonald's is, right? I don't even eat there and I know what it is. I know what they have on their menu and I don't eat there. But the big thing is, is that they still do advertising. They're still doing all that things because they need you to remember who they are, what they do, what they offer. Oh, man. Remember McDonald's has a, a, a shamrock shake? Oh, man. Do you remember? Oh, they got a filet of fish. You remember that? Oh, man. I, I haven't had one of those in forever. Because you see a billboard, it reminds you, right? You have to remind these people. And that's what upselling is. It's just reminding them of all the services you offer and all the things you can do. Now, if you could take all the tickets that you had last year, look at the number. Maybe it's 100 jobs you did last year. Maybe it's 1,000 jobs. Maybe it's 5,000 jobs. Whatever the number of jobs that you did last year, imagine if every one of those tickets could go up by an average of, we'll say, $45. The average $45 is what the average increase for an upsell was across all platforms. Because some people are going to be like, no, no, I'm good with the windows, right? A lot of people just do just windows. But upselling will be that every 10th one, you're adding another $200. Well, that just adds $20 to everybody, right? You see how that works out. So if you could increase the ticket price on every one, which $45 was ours in our normal at, uh, upsell, we normally upsold uh, two people, like, you know, an average of uh, $450 on two people, which translates, no, out of 10 is 400 anyway, $45 per ticket. We would increase by adding upselling. Every single job you did now, I'm broken down into even numbers. I know not every job, you get what I'm saying, is going to go up by 45 bucks. $45 per job. You've increased your ticket price by increasing services and helping more people. 
Listen, nobody is calling you and you're bamboozling them into taking their services. Our job is to let them know what we do and help them get that done. Nobody needs what we do. We're a luxury. Understand that. Upselling, not being pushy, but upselling, just letting them know what else we do will increase your average ticket. Upsell everything you can. Let them know and keep them in the know. Be McDonald's. Put billboards out there in their brains of what we do. Single services. See, if I go to McDonald's because I saw a filet of fish billboard, I'm still going to buy fries and a soda and make a, more than what I just saw, right? But that's what you're doing is you're putting it out there, letting them know. Another one is tell them everything. Now, a lot of people don't do this. Now, I'll explain what it means. When I get to a job, I'm going to tell them everything so they have the expectation set. Remember, when somebody complains, it's because their expectation wasn't set. It's not because of the bad work or the cheap price. or the Like, if I go in there and say, hey, so we're going to be doing your inside and outside windows. We'll be wiping off your cells, but I'm not going to clean any of your screens because you didn't want to do that. Uh, and then we're just going to wipe down anything the water drips. But I'm not going to do any heavy detailing in the uh, inside windows. Your windows will look great, but if you ever want to add any of the other stuff, you certainly can. I just told them a lot of information. But when I'm done, guess what? No one is going to go and give me a bad review and say, this guy charged me, you know, $400 for a window cleaning. It was just too much. Well, I told them what I was charging before we even started. So they're not going to because they already know what it is. If I charge them more than what I tell them, then they're going to be pissed and they're going to complain. Right? If they, if I get all done, they go, man, this guy didn't even clean my screens. Uh, they'll never, not 100 100% of the time, not do that. And the reason is because they already knew I'm not going to clean the screens, right? If I show up to a job and I'm doing pressure washing, I will tell them. Now, keep in mind, uh, we do a great work and it's going to be absolutely clean. You're going to be very happy with the job, but this is not going to make it look brand new. There's no way for me to get back those 20 years since this concrete was poured. I just want to let you know that. Like, oh, I know. I'm not looking for it to look brand new. I just want it to look better. When I get done every single time, every single time I've ever done concrete, people are like, wow, it looks great. It looks great. I've even had people where there's like spots that are chipped or, or uh, oil stains that we didn't get out or something, which I always tell people to on the oil stains. Concrete is porous. That oil is going to be a lot deeper. We're running, uh, usually we'll do cold machines on houses. We usually won't bring hot machines. Um, and I'll treat everything, but I'm going to tell you just so you know, there's going to be some shadow and you're still going to see it. People will walk up there and go, oh yeah, you can still see the oil a little bit, but man, is it better than it was? They will tell me that because their expectation was that. And I performed that, right? Hard water is another one. If you get done with the whole house, I always will go with somebody, even if I'm on the phone and even if somebody's not there, I'll say, Hey, uh, this is Jersey with XYZ. I just want to let you know everything turned out great. The windows look fantastic. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, just so you know, on the ground level in the front, there's some hard water. Hard water is just mineralization that's on the glass. Looks kind of like white spots, but I wanted to let you know. Now, remember, we look at the glass, not through the glass, so you may not even recognize it or see it, but I wanted you to be aware of it. If you do want us to remove that, just let me know. It's an acid wash process that we do. It's $20 a paint is where that pricing starts, but uh, we can get that done anytime if you want it. Now, all of a sudden, not one time in the entire history of my company has anybody complained about hard water because they knew it was there. I told them that it was there. I told them how I could fix it, and I told them the price if they wanted me to fix it. I also told them they might not even see it. So when they look at it and go, ah, you know, it's not even that bad. He said we might not even see it. If you set an expectation and tell them everything, they're going to be happy. They're not going to complain because they're meeting their expectations. Tell them everything. If you crack a window, don't be like, oh, man, I got to just get it fixed. And I if somebody finds something that you didn't tell them, they will be pissed. If you tell them before they find out, they'll be like, oh, okay, I appreciate you bringing that up. We've had stuff. I had a guy one time put the back of his pole through a window. Like, not just like, oh, we cracked it while we were... No, like, tsh, like broken window, second floor. <sighs> Instantly, we went to the person who was sitting out, uh, like, sunbathing-ish, kind of, reading a book in the sun or something. Just kind of looks up and uh, I said, just want to let you know that one of our texts, the back of his pole kind of got away from him and he broke the window. 
I am bringing it to the facility right now that does our glass. They will put us in priority and I'll have this back to you ASAP. But I wanted to let you know that we've cleaned everything up. I can't believe this happened. I'm so truly sorry, but we'll get that done. You can inspect it before we leave. Oh, don't worry about it. Things happen. We just smashed one of your windows. But we told them. We told them. They're like, this guy's not hiding anything. He's just making it right. Right? It's the same thing. Sometimes people make mistakes and other people know that people are human. If you let them know it's a mistake... They're going to forgive you for it. If you don't tell them about it, it's not a good thing. Remember, make the experience better. The experience is why people hire you, not because you get clean windows. They could hire anybody. The experience is how they're going to remember you, use you again, and why they're using you in the first place. Create a better experience. Everything from how you talk to them, your logoed and lettered, your papers, nothing is handwritten. It looks great, right? You've taken time. You've created an experience. You're putting booties on. You're using high-tech equipment. You're super friendly and nice. You're clean. You don't smell. Like All of these things come into the experience, and the experience in residential is what will save your company, make your company, grow your company, and get you repeat business. It's the experience. But the number one thing, even though this wasn't a list, my favorite thing on this, the biggest thing that changed my life in business was book the next appointment at the end of the job. And I still know 99% of you are not doing this. Because a lot of you are like, ah, I just got done. They're not going to want it again. If you put the fate of a repeat customer or another job in their hands, they will not do it exactly like you will. They'll do it later. They'll forget. Instead of in three months, like they said, they're going to do six months. Maybe it'll be eight months. Maybe it'll be really bad, right? Maybe they'll forget about you all the time. They'll call somebody they thought it was. Did we use the last time? I can't remember. Let's, right? Take that away. There is no fate in business. If you let your business hang on fate, then you don't have control of your business. Take control. When you're done with a job, let them know. Okay, great. All the crew chiefs, everybody's got calendars for uh, a month of three months from then and a month uh, or a calendar of the month from six months. It's in there. We call it the Bible. I'm sorry in advance, but that's just, it's everything that we need to know. It's all in there. And in that is the calendar for that. And it has everybody written down, right? We just print that calendar and then give it to them. At the end of the job, they go, okay, Mrs. Jones, uh, everything, you know, collect everything. Great. Okay, so the only thing we need now is to know your next appointment. Did you want to do in three months or did you want to wait a uh, full six months? She's normally going to be like, oh, you know, uh, I think six months is good. Okay, great. Well, here's our calendar. This is what it looks like from six months from now. Uh, looks like, how about a Tuesday? I know we were here this Tuesday at 10 a.m. I got another Tuesday the 12th. Uh, how's that work for you? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, great. If you want to write that in your calendar, we'll make sure to call you the beginning of the week just to let you know. But I'll put that in the calendar to save you a spot. What? You just left the job booking another job. Think about that. If you fill up six months of residential, you have a year of residential booked. If you can do this. It's so absolutely simple. When you go to the dentist, what happens? When you leave the dentist, you automatically have another appointment. Six months from now, what uh, time works best for you? Every time. Every single time. In an oil change, they tell you when the next time is. They still leave it to fate because you have to show up, but they tell you. All of these things where people are like, well, I couldn't book somebody again. You sure could. We are absolutely a luxury. Are you telling me that in any other luxury service, high-end luxury service, they're not making that all happen? People are booking six-month hair appointments, right? Let's get in the books now for six months in a hair appointment. They're booking that stuff. They will book you too. Now, if you already have them booked, you're not going to have to spend any money to get them back, right? All you have to do is a Monday, you're going to call everybody and just say, hey, just so I want to give you a heads up. I know we talked, it's been about six months, but we'll be there on Tuesday. Every now and then somebody has to risk, oh my gosh, I forgot I didn't write it down. But for the most part, everybody's like, oh, absolutely. Get them to book the next one. Change your company. Change what you're doing. You will make more money have more jobs, and be just breaking it in if you can add these things. But remember, I'm just some guy with a microphone and a cardboard backdrop.
So I am nobody, but if you decide this year's the year to kind of do something fun for your company, do that. Do that. I think you'll be super, super stoked. And, by the way, if you haven't yet, please, please, please let me be your rep. Again, my name is Jersey with windowcleaner.com. We sell window cleaning supplies, anything and everything you could possibly need. We are the best at what we do. I am the best at what I do. I make that promise to you. So let me be your rep. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Just save that. I'm the only jersey in your phone. Now you got a guy. Text me anytime during the day. You got questions on bids? Let me know. You got questions on products? Let me know. You want to put an order in? Even better. Let me know. I want to put it in for you. Put it all in your cart. Just make sure you're logged in so it saves. Be like, yo, jersey, everything's in my cart. Put it through. I'm going to verify your address. And that's it. I'm going to run it. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's even easier. And I get credit for it. So it's super awesome. And again, if you want some awesome stickers, because you do, then go and get the AWC uh, magazine. This is American Window Cleaner magazine. I just happen to have uh, these next to me. But this is the uh, Sorbo. If you don't know who Sorbo is from the product Sorbo, he's right there. That's him. The godfather of the wide body. Super, super awesome. If you haven't had a chance to get the magazine, why not? I mean, you're watching a podcast right now. Why not get a magazine that is all on it? We have, uh, oh, there's a picture of me in my article, but uh, we have posters and sticker sheets. And like I said, sneak peek at the next sticker sheets. But anyway, get some, do it. It's like an awesome virtual high five by the way. So do that. Go there, A W C M A G dot com forward slash sub do it now so you don't forget make my day i but i do definitely appreciate it make sure to go and be the best residential window cleaning company you certainly can be and until next week go out there and be epic